It's time to get serious about your self up exam. If you have been careless and you have been failing, you need to understand important things that we're going to discuss in this video, mainly for writing and speaking. This is a two-part series. In the next video, I'll cover reading and listening. But look, there is advice that I throw at you time after time, but it's not being implemented. And that's why we see a lot of people emailing me saying, we failed it four times, five times, and so on. There are things you need to improve, and if you don't, it, you will never be successful, especially in these writing and speaking modules. Let's begin with the two most important things, the two most common mistakes people make, grammar and vocabulary. It's simple. I'm going to repeat it. I always say this, but it's up to you to follow because I really need you to pass. I need you to get closer to your immigration dream. So here's the thing. With Grammar, if you want to do it without spending any money, there's a great software called Grammarly. Use it when you write stuff, use Grammarly. Of course, for speaking, it does not help you. But even Grammarly is, according to my judgment, 70% accurate. If you need proper advice on writing, speaking, and figure out all mistakes you're making and how to improve them, get a teacher. Get them with us or with anyone else, but please get a teacher. At ATED Education, we provide you with qualified CELPIP teachers with years of experience, and they will mark you not only on grammar, but on so many other things. But you need to improve your grammar because this is the number one mistake. Number two is vocabulary. We're going to look at the marking scheme in a sec, and I'll discuss vocab in detail. But having weak vocab is the reason a lot of people are failing in this exam too, because you do require advanced vocab, especially if you need more than a nine. So, to begin, check out the free resource in the description, 400 best CELPIP words to use in your exam. This can be used for writing and speaking, and it'll improve your marks, but there are about a thousand you should know. These thousand words are included in our CELPIP self-paced course that you can check out in the description, or if you are going with our live sessions, you get these lists for free. Vocab and grammar, they're the two main problems people have, but there are a lot more. So today, we're going to understand the examiner marking scheme in detail. Let's start with CELPIP speaking. This is going to be more detailed, and you'll see CELPIP writing is a smaller version of this because it's about the same requirements you have. Now, most of you are looking for a level 9 or higher in the CELPIP exam, and this is from their official website. This is what's written, but you got to understand how it works. Let's have a look. There are a few things you are marked at in the speaking part, coherence, vocabulary, listenability, and so on. We'll cover each one of these. Now remember, to do all of this correctly, you need good grammar and vocab. In fact, there's a whole section just on vocab telling you how important this is. Basic vocab does not work. Let's start with coherence and content, and this is where you are using your paragraphs nicely in writing and in speaking. It is how you organize the information. So I'm not going to read all of it. You can read it if you want. You can pause the video and read it. I do recommend that. But let me explain to you what this means in the elaborated version of it. So when you are being asked to communicate in non-routine situations, it means you're going to get difficult situations. For example, question number six, where you have to explain something difficult, give a bad news. So you should be able to use your structure in that range. And if you have seen our self speaking templates, you know, we start with the greeting, we talk about the situation, then we, in most cases, apologize because we're about to give a bad news. And then at the end, we give an alternative that, hey, I could not do this for you. Let me do this for you instead. I'm talking about part six speaking. And if you want to understand better what all of this means, check out our self speaking templates video in the description so you know how to answer all eight parts. But that is appropriate to the situation when you are delivering a bad news, you use that structure. In part one speaking, when you're making a suggestion, you got to make sure you make it realistic, talk to a friend in an informal way. And if it's a formal person, talk to them in that fashion. Part five, you need to be convincing because that's a persuasion thing. Parts three and four, you can be descriptive because you're just describing a picture. So not much emphasis needed. And that's exactly what this means. It should be appropriate to the topic and make sure you're using the right words and phrases appropriate to the situation. Now, this is weird. You need complex and clear uh, descriptions. So it's both. It's complex and clear. And what this means is 
your ideas should not just be, of course, they should be clear, easy to understand, but they, sh they should also have a little complexity, which means use complex sentences. Make sure to use compound sentences where you have more than one clauses. For example, a simple sentence is, we need to plant trees in this garden. A complex sentence is, since the garden is very dull, comma, in writing, we need to plant more trees. This has two clauses, all right? So make sure you have a good mixture of complex and simple sentences that'll help you with your coherence as well. And why it, it is a mark in your content is because it elaborates the content much better. Once you say, hey, we need to do this because of this, you link two to three things, you can define multiple things, and you can summarize a lot of those as well. So it's very useful to do. Please make sure to use these techniques in your speaking. When we talk about vocab, it's not only advanced vocab, but it says broad range of figures of speech, idioms, and, and all that. So one thing is you got to use a good combination of simple and mostly advanced vocab. So if you have a basic word like uh, harmful, try to make it, uh, try to say detrimental. Okay. Uh, if you have a word like disturbing, make it agitating. So make words advanced, but also use a range, which means use adverbs, adjectives, Okay, so adjectives are qualities, good, bad, sad. Adverbs are at least, quickly, slowly, uh, nicely. Make sure to use them, plus use complex sentences, plus use connectors, which means furthermore, likewise, moreover, plus use active voices and passive voices. All right, now there's, thing about, there's something about idioms here. Don't use traditional cliche idioms like it's raining cats and dogs, but instead use idiomatic expressions, which are things like uh, this person is gonna kick the bucket, which means he's gonna die or I went the extra mile for my employer. So these are words that are not just very different from the situation. They're not 100% metaphors, which would mean that they just don't make any sense. They do make sense in the term or in the, in the tone that you are answering. If you say, I went the extra mile for my employer, it makes sense. Anyone who doesn't know what that means can probably tell Okay, you did something extra for the employer. So use idiomatic expressions of that nature. We have a video on that too. If you can search is it education idiomatic expressions, you'll get to know more about that. So make sure to incorporate all those ideas. It's not just good vocab, it is range and using uh, idiomatic expressions and all those things combined. Listenability, you can read what this says, but let me tell you what you need to do here pause between your sentences, just like I pause right now. You take a deep breath, you pause, gives you confidence, shows your control, and makes it easy for the listener to listen. Also, the examiner is able to listen when you move from one point to another. So pause between your points and sentences. Make sure to have a steady pace, not too fast, not too slow. Uh, if you try to do try to speak too fast just to get points in, you will lose marks on listenability. Good control has to do with your tone. You should sound confident and, again, appropriate to the situation, informal or formal, and that'll show that you're in control. Please also make sure to use greetings at the start and at the end when you're talking to people. And don't be, please don't be robotic. That's where most people lose marks. Be natural, emphasize words and phrases like you were speaking naturally. When you use adjectives, you say, this is amazing, or this is terrible. Emphasize adjectives. That's where you have to. I mean, that's how natural people talk. So make sure to do that. Task fulfillment. Make sure to answer the question being asked. This is pretty uh, simple. Don't talk about another answer. Make sure you're targeting the exact question. That's pretty much it for speaking. And when is basically talking about the different types of questions you may face. Now, let's talk about writing. As I said earlier, speaking and writing criteria is very similar. You have kind of the same things. You have the coherence, vocabulary, complex sentences, and all those things. Remember though, now you're writing, so your capital 
small letters, they are judged, your punctuation is judged, and overall, you are judged more. Because unlike speaking, in writing, you can proofread, which means we are expecting a better level in writing. Now, let's look at what a 12 looks like, and these are the things you want to focus on. Don't just think of it as, you know, you're reading the marking sheet, but think of it as what you need to do to get all these things done. So, when we talk about coherence and content, again, make sure you have complex sentences, in writing it becomes very important. And in writing, it's not only about using complex starts like since, because of, due to, uh, considering, you know, when you use all these words, you break the sentence into two parts, but also you can use commas. So I wanted to go outside today, comma, however, comma, I am late. So now you have two commas, you have a connector, and you can continue. You can also use semicolons to divide two clauses into one sentence, and that's how you can add more variations in writing, of course, for complex sentences. Make sure you have, again, a range of vocab and uh, complex sentences, but also intentions and objectives. Now, what this means is using, again, a range of ways to describe things. Look, I can say that I saw the deer, active voice. Passive voice is the deer was seen by me. And another passive voice, it's another range and a, another expression, deers can be observed in the nature, right? So there's multiple ways of defining it. Now let's add some adjectives or adverbs to it. Surely many deers can be spotted in wildlife. Surely is an ad adverb. Now let's add an adjective. Surely many deers can be spotted, uh, many beautiful deers can be spotted in the wildlife. Right, so here you're using adjectives, adverbs, using multiple range and different ideas which contribute to your range and explanations. It makes explanations better and it helps you get marks for the next thing as well, which is vocabulary. Now make sure, of course, to use the precise meaning, make sure it's relevant to what you're talking about. It's pretty straightforward here, but in this uh, block and this block, they have covered how much focus you have to give to expressions, vocab, range, advanced words, and not just keeping simple sentences, but keeping a mixture of simple and complex sentences. Pretty similar to speaking vocab, try to make it better, try to use good range. Readability, okay, for this, you can read it, you can read what it says here. Uh, and again, it does mention complex sentences and diverse grammatical structures, we have covered that. But let me give you a simple overview of this, and you can check out our writing templates in the description to understand this better. Writing task one has five paragraphs, okay? It has your intro, where you give the purpose, then your three body paragraphs, and your conclusion, which is your final greeting. This is the structure for the formal email. For the informal email, it's again five paragraphs, intro and conclusion are your greetings, and the three paragraphs in the middle, the three bodies are gonna answer the three bullet points in the question. So you have five paragraphs in task one. In task two, you have four. So you do your intro and conclusion. Intro, you give your opinion. Conclusion, you rephrase your opinion. Body one, talk about the positive points of your choice. Body two, talk about the negative points of the other choice. Simple, four paragraphs. That's it, that's how you improve your readability and it's similar to the mark that you will get for content and structure. If you just divide it into those parts, you gain a lot of marks there. Make sure to also use the right connectors at the beginning of each paragraph. For example, when you start your intro, you can start by talking about this topic uh, uh, talks about or this topic has been a debate or the topic of this has been uh, ongoing uh, in discussions in the community and so on. In conclusion, you would use words like in conclusion or conclusively. When you're going from one paragraph to another, you would use words like on the other hand or nevertheless if you're changing paragraphs if or ideas in that case. If you're adding ideas, you would use furthermore. If you're building onto an idea, you would say with that said, right? To make sure to use appropriate connectors from one paragraph to another and a simple way to understand this check out our writing templates and writing videos. Links are in the description. Now, task fulfillment, please make sure to brainstorm at the beginning of each writing task. Take two to three minutes in task one and task two. Write down your ideas at the start. What are you gonna put in body one, two, three, or body one and two? 
then write the rest of it. I have been doing this for now almost close to 20 years. I still do this. And this is something everyone who scores 11, 12, my best students do this. You know why? As humans, we forget the task after we start writing. That's why when we provide feedback, mostly second paragraph onwards, you guys are talking about some other question because you're pressurized with time and stress and so on. But at the start, when you read the question, it's the most fresh in your brain. That's the time you write the outline. You will be accurate and you simply have to follow the outline later on. Okay, so make sure to do that. And that is going to be appropriate to the situation. And another thing that uh, which I should talk about when it says appropriate, it, it's mostly referring to task one where it's informal or formal. So look, if in an informal email, you mention words like I'm looking forward to, you're going to lose marks. It's not appropriate to a friend or family member who is informal. Similarly, in a formal email, if you say, hey, what's up? to your boss, you're going to lose marks. So make sure to not do those things and make sure it's appropriate to the task you are doing. And please, guys, make sure to get serious about this because I give this advice time and time again. And people, some of you listen to these videos and you are very successful and I'm glad to see your success. Some of you come back and say, hey, I got this score. And at that point, I'm like, did you follow this, this, this? And it's not being followed. So make sure to really follow these things. Ask yourself if you have practiced your grammar and vocab the way I have suggested. If you have used these marking criteria correctly, if you have used our course, and if you do have any questions or confusions, just email us. Email is in the description. Comment for any questions, and let's get this done and get you a good mark. Please like, share, and subscribe. We'll talk soon.